All right, welcome everyone. My name is Kurt, and this is a sketch that got way out of hand. <laughs> so uh, I, I I sat down with uh, it was late one night in Clip Studio, and I was thinking about uh, the range, dynamic range of value, and how it's kind of limited in comics because you know we have line art. And we have color, and there usually needs to be a pretty clear separation there. So it sort of limits um, how dark you can get in a lot of styles. And so I wanted to use like the full range on a on a sketch. And I, I really did not expect this to get so detailed, but I was having a lot of fun trying a lot of new things I've learned. And so um, I wanted to do a couple of things. I, I didn't want to have any, a drawing. Uh, I'm going to see if I can skip that stage <laughs> and. Uh, uh, the design of this is not great. It literally was like, uh, here's a dragon's head with a bunch of planes, and you know, scales will be fun to, to, to paint. And uh, so it, I, I spent no time whatsoever on like what this thing should look like. It looks like a turtle on the end of its face <laughs> at this stage. But um, this is all. Um, obviously black and white it's all a uh, pretty low value actually it, it, it's hard to, to tell with this but I don't think there's anything brighter than like 50% gray at this point maybe um, if that so um, but uh, I was just using uh, just a soft round brush uh, for the soft stuff and if you see a, a brush that's got some teeth to it a little bit of grit uh, a little bit of uh, the one I'm using now uh, that is Ron Chan's uh, pencil uh, from his, one of his free pencils from his store. And it's free, but you can pay what you want. So, you know, if you go tip him a little bit because, I mean, if you can. Uh, it's a great pencil. I like to paint with it. it it's it's very jagged. It's kind of mean looking. Uh, I don't know. I just, it, it has a lot of uh, character, uh, I think, in the lines. And it works really, really well with tilt in a way that a lot of brushes for clip doesn't. So, uh, Ron, if you're listening, I want to be an affiliate for your for your page. Hit me up. <laughs> I send a lot of people your way anyway. Um, I also played a little bit around with uh, the new Liquify tool in Clip Studio, which is crazy powerful. Um, but uh, all of this was done over the course of about half an hour. Um, and, uh, for those of you that saw that little color transition, it always happens very quickly with, <laughs> with time lapses. It's just an overlay layer. Uh, there's an overlay layer on top of the, of the, of the black and white. And, uh, most of that is on the overlay layer. And then, then I would, I would merge it all down to one layer and then paint on top. And I would get to a certain point, and I would throw more overlays over the top, and then flatten it and paint over it. So most of this was effectively one layer, outside of using the overlay to shift the midtones around. And uh, and this video is square because the video that I dumped in here from Clip was square, and I had some other stuff going on, on my screen I couldn't really show, and so I ended up just cropping it, and and it'll look great on your phone and horrible on your big TV. Sorry. <laughs> not really horrible uh, you're seeing as much of my canvas as I could actually see uh, this is about how zoomed in I stayed um, I also tried something different in that I uh, I didn't wear my glasses for the first part of this at all I, I can't see okay uh, without my glasses uh, my my right eye is like 20 a thousand literally and so uh, I'm legally blind and um so I decided uh, in that eye, I can see with glasses or contacts. So I'm not, I'm blind enough to be legally blind if they weren't correctable. I think that's how that's supposed to go. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, not relevant, but um, what was I talking about? Uh, yeah, so the process on this um, was uh, it just, it all just came out of me, honestly. Like I didn't really intend on doing all this and I've, I just I felt like I found another gear or something that night and really just wanted to explore uh, translucency. It was something I was intentionally trying to work on here. Uh, there's a little bit of light getting into them, I feel like, or at least it should feel that way. I hope it does. 
Um, I didn't like this little transition across his from his eyebrowy thing to that thing on his nose, the little broken transition, uh, because again, this is sort of a bad design. Um, and I was always impressed with with painters on YouTube that just you know make these big sweeping changes uh, in paint in one color. And I wanted to work on that too. So um, <laughs> you'll see me try to fix that earlier or later. Um, but what, what I found was interesting that worked pretty well, like what I'm doing now is like, I would just grab a color and then, you know, whatever that, that plane, uh, for that color would show up. That's what I was looking for. Uh, and this is not, I, I don't, I don't know, uh, if this is all, um, geometrically right or whatever. I was going for more cool look than, you know, realism here, but, um, this was a lot of fun, though. It really was. I, I want to get into more painting. Uh, I want to do more stuff like this. I will probably be starting that very soon. Uh, I don't know if it'll be. On, I don't know if it'll be on the current channel or if it'll be on a new channel. But um, yeah, I, I, but we're going to be shifting things up for too long. Uh, I'll always. I'll probably always do coloring tutorials, but I. I. I, I have a strong urge to paint these days, and so uh, I will probably start doing some tutorials about that. Um, as well, again, also, don't freak out. I'll, I'll still be doing coloring tutorial. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, I was trying to make it look translucent anywhere where that was. I was just, it's a lot more saturated, basically. Uh, that's really the only place where there's a lot of saturation. Um, anywhere where I thought the light might get trapped um, as it's bouncing around things. And another, another thing you want to notice here, or you can notice here, is how much more detailed the light side is than the dark side of them. Um, it might look like there's a lot of stuff back there, but it's way, way simpler in the dark. Um, and that's one thing I've found, even in my comics, that I've noticed uh, uh, can save you some time and also just make it look better. Is um, you know your your shadows should not just be the same rendering but darker. You know we see less information in shadows. Um, go look at some Rembrandt stuff um, and compare what you can see in the shadow versus what you can see in the light. And it's not just like the same level of detail and darker, there's less detail, you know, because our eyes require, you know, light in order to find, in order to get that detail. If you don't have enough light, you don't have enough detail. And so that's why there's so much more color variation and, and more details on the light side than there is the dark. And this was from Imagination. There was no reference at all. I just, uh, I understand why James Gurney likes painting dinosaurs. They're uh, very, very fun to paint. And also, um, they're hard to screw up when you, <laughs> when the, you know, uh, when they're off, when they're like this and they're not actually a real animal, you know. It's not like there's a right uh, model that this should look like. And so you can kind of do your own thing and, uh, you know, have, have some fun with it. But, um, I was kind of throwing everything at this that I feel like I've learned over the last couple of years, um, about reflections and about, uh, subsurface, Fresnel effect, all the things that I've talked about over the years on this channel, um, you know, reflected light and bounce light and, uh, anywhere you see it getting like really uh, bright, like in that corner, it's like, why is that so bright? Why is that so saturated? Uh, it's like a little saturation trap, which I, I didn't, uh, I didn't invent that term. That was Marta Gracia was the first place I ever saw it. But, uh, but yeah, what happens is the color bounces and bounces and bounces. And every time it bounces, it gets more saturated. And uh, on reflective surfaces, you can end up with more saturated color in in the corners like under his eyes and that kind of stuff and i don't know if this is you know it's probably not exactly right but it's in the ballpark i really like that red that color that, that just orange color was exactly what i felt like this needed for some reason i'll have to figure out later why it was a good color probably because it's complementary really advanced color theory there uh, here I was trying to cut in some shadows into the bottom and made them a little too dark, so I uh, backed that up. 
But yeah, at this point, it's just about like finding little interesting places that are missing detail and things. Any, I didn't want any flat surfaces. Uh, something I picked up from Boro Dante on YouTube, um, or Boro CG, I think his channel is called now. Um, is that when you're painting this detail, a flat surface isn't realistic. Like there's always a little bit of some kind of gradient or something fading or something going on. And so I was really trying to just not have any flat surfaces that weren't intentional. Anyway, there's some areas of his face, of course, that are flatter than others. I switched to a little bit thinner brush size here to get just in, just around his eye. I mean, it's really the only place that I got that small that I wanted that that, that much detail because, uh, you know, that was, um, you know, something you're going to notice, obviously, eyeballs. So a lot more detail there. But you guys, let me know if this is something you're interested in and in learning more about. Um, because to me, I, I feel like I am I'm reaching the limits of talking about color without digging into a lot of bigger art concepts <laughs> because that's really what makes uh, you know a great colorist a great colorist is, is not just an understanding of color but an understanding of, of all art concepts and so uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, getting into more drawing more painting and all of this will also make you a better colorist so Anyway, I'm reaching the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to do one of those like slow pans or something here. Maybe a zoom. Uh, what did I decide to do? Um, oh, the the old uh, close up on the eye and pull out slowly trick. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, this was a ton of fun. I had a lot of fun doing this. I want to do more of it. Uh, let me know what you guys think if, if you're into stuff like this. Obviously, if I want to do a real tutorial, it'll be step by step and not just me yakking over a time lapse like this. But um, anyway, I like to see this kind of stuff. I hope you guys do too. Check the links in the description if you want to support what I'm doing here. This uh, craziness. And uh, oh, they'll do double pan. I forgot the double pan. Yeah, the side to side. So yeah, there's the monster's head. There's the turtle face that I screwed up on. And there's his eye. See, see that's how that works. You guys take care. I'll watch it. <laughs> See you in the next one.